When the software first starts, you're presented with a gray application window with a toolbar at the top. The database is empty, so you can either start inputting data immediately or you can load our demo data to begin experimenting with the software. To load demo data, click on the menu, help, and then choose, load demo data. A safety feature of the software is that it prompts you to perform a backup of your data anytime you're about to do something destructive, so that you can go back to a point in time if the need arises. It will ask you where you want to store your backups. You may choose any folder of your liking, or even an external storage device. When the backup is complete it can proceed with the selected task. In this case, it will ask you if you're sure you want to load the demo data, which will effectively return your database back to a clean slate and then load the demo data. Any time data is restored, including loading demo data, the application will need to be restarted. So here the application automatically closes and then you just open it again from the desktop shortcut. Now you can review the demo data. Let's search the data records and see what's out there. You can filter your search results, or you can just return every record in your database if you like. When your results are displayed, if the criteria is met, you'll see a listing of the applicable records. On the left side of the window are blue numbers which represent the record identifiers of these records. Clicking on one of those numbers opens the record for review. If you're reviewing a series of graves and want to navigate between records, you can use the menu at the top of the screen and choose one of the navigational options listed, or you can use your left or right arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate between records. If you've loaded images for your records, they will be displayed here. You can load multiple images per record, if you like, or none at all. If you want to edit this particular record from the search results, click on the menu, Edit, at the top of the window. From here you can add or edit images, change data on the record, create an invoice, generate a deed, and you can navigate through records like you did on the previous display window. Maybe you want to add a brand new record to the database. When you get to the purchaser information you can choose from already inputted purchasers in the drop-down, or you can choose the drop-down option to let you input a brand new purchaser. You'll notice that some fields are yellow, which means they are protected. This is to be filled in when you create an invoice. But you can override that by pressing the F7 key on your keyboard to unlock these fields if you don't want to hassle with invoices or these are just old records that don't need an invoice. Note that the purchase price automatically fills from the lot type you have specified in the drop-down above, and finds the price associated with that record. You can just type over that if you like. The bottom left corner of this window shows all the custom data fields. You can add more custom data fields also, as many as you like. And if they are text data fields you'll be presented with a drop-down so that you can choose from previous answers to this field instead of having to retype items every time. When you're finished you have a couple of ways you can save the record. You can click on the menu, File, and choose the option to, Save, or you can press the F10 key on your keyboard. If you want to input another new record you can choose the menu, File, and then, Clear Screen, or just press the Escape key on your keyboard. Now let's say you want to search the records but you want to filter the results. When you get to the search page you can type in one, or more, keywords for your search and click the search button. If you decided you want a printout of this information, you could click on the menu, Print. There is another way to input new records and that's through the Purchasers Manager. From here you can input a purchaser record and then input one, or more, grave records that will be tied to that purchaser. Moving back to the search page you'll find you can also search by grave location, or dates. Input whole, or partial, information and check the appropriate boxes for your filters and then click the search button. If you do generate invoices, you'll want to use the accounts receivable manager to handle payment records. You would do that here. Double clicking on a record here opens the cemetery record in the editor. Now let's say you want to utilize the map feature of this software. Before you do that, you have to build one. Lucky for you we have done that for you with the demo data. Let's check it out. As you can see, it's a green canvas with graves and roads already in place. 
You can add path markers by making them graves and adding short text to the identifiers, or you can make large symbols, like our N and up arrow, to indicate direction. If you want to add a new grave to the map, you can do so like this. And if you want to see how that will look with your cemetery database, just click on the map view button to see an interactive representation. Clicking on a grave in the map fills the box at the top of the window with the information from the database regarding interred or purchasers. Then you can double click on one of those items to open that record full screen. You can also use the feature on the left of the window to add multiple graves at a time. Fill in the information and use the F9 key to apply that to the map. It will increment the lot number each time so you can just move to the next position and click F9 again, and so on. If need be, you can edit the size of your map, or insert columns or rows, or delete columns or rows. If you have more than one cemetery in the cemetery manager you can change cemeteries here also. Another feature of the software is the ability to produce reports. You can choose from already created reports, or you can build your own and save those for repeated use. When building a custom report you can choose sort orders for your data and even filter results on your own criteria. If you want to create a report and save it for repeated use, you can do the following. And to use a report again you would do this. Under the settings menu you can add or edit custom field name, add or edit cemetery records, and add or edit lot type records. You can also add or edit a deed template. Until you create at least one deed template you cannot generate a deed. Note that the keywords used on the template are replaced with database values. Other features of the software are the ability to perform data backups and restore data backups, as well as to import data from spreadsheets or even our online version. If you need to share this data with other people on your network you'll want to set a shared database folder that you all can publicly access. By default, the software is only installed in your My Documents folder. That should be enough to get you going. And if you want to start fresh after reviewing the demo data, just open your My Documents folder and look for a folder named CryptKeeper10 and delete that folder.